What do aviation and Chex Mix have to do with each other? Pretty much nothing. Happy Whimsical Wednesday. It is November and per my search on the interwebs, it is Aviation History Month. So I thought that that could be a fun theme of things to talk about and this time of year makes me want Chex Mix. So I thought I would make some Chex Mix while we chat. Chex and chat. So I have a recipe that I'm loosely following just because, you know, I only make Chex Mix like once a year, so I can never really remember it. So I will put the recipe in my description so you can check that out. <laughs> check it out for the Chex. <laughs> I'm so funny. Little Worcestershire, Worcestershire. <laughs> Does anyone else have the hardest um, time saying Worcestershire? I think I said it right that time. Um, so I'm doubling the seasoning because I feel like last year some of mine Chex Mix didn't have quite enough. So we're just gonna go for like more seasoning instead of less seasoning. And I'm adding a whole bunch of extra stuff, so I think it'll be fine. Teaspoon. Garlic powder. I also just realized as I was looking at this recipe, it definitely says unsalted butter. And I 100% put salted butter in it. So, did one less teaspoon of the seasoned salt so hopefully this isn't like a freaking sodium fest we'll find out all right so we've got our butter sitch all like nice and melted and i'm gonna go ahead and get the oven preheating so bake to fitty start and i'm going to start combining all of my other ingredients into this giant pot mostly because i don't have a bowl that's big enough for everything. <laughs> Got the Chex. Well, this isn't even Chex Mix. These are Cheerios. And we're just going to eyeball it. And then... So, starting with our aviation stuff while I'm pouring all this in. Um, back in 1000 BC, or BCE as the um, website I was looking at said. China invents the first kite. Just kind of like even weird to think about like not having kites, right? Pan over to my, my professional shopper. Left out part of the chicks. Oh, we got a big boy down here. Oh, maybe, maybe. Yiba, you like Chex Mix? Y'all are getting like the most whimsical whimsical Wednesday in the history of Rachel's filming. So enjoy. All right, we've got Cano nuts. But like I was saying, China invented the kite and like, I've never even like thought about there not being kites. So who knew? I guess somebody had to invent it at some point, right? And then we fast forward to somewhere between like 1485 and 1500. Da Vinci actually um, designed some flying machines, but he kept them hidden. So nobody even knew about it till like 400 years. Let me make sure that's right. Yeah, till 400 years after he died. Like, so sad. No one ever knew how. Well, I guess they knew it was amazing, but I don't know. So that's crazy. And then we scoot on up to November 21st of 17. 83 and we get the first untethered man's hot air balloon. Gonna roll with these like leftover cheese up. And then maybe like half the box. They have bagel chips. So instead of bagel chips, we're using cheese up because we're crazy like that. I think these are flavored too. Cheddar Jack cheese up. All right, and some more um, cleaning out of the pantry. Some pistachios. 
We almost forgot the pretzels, y'all. All right, so upon further review, slash trying to add uh, pretzels to my concoction, I decided that we're, hey, definitely gonna need some more sauce. So I um, added some more butter and stuff, and then I separated half of our mixture because someone here has gotten a little carried away in the quantity of Chex Mix being created. And I used regular unsalted butter this time and did not add any more seasoned salt. I actually forgot to add a Worcestershire now that we're talking about it. So I'm gonna add that in. But the good news is I think the saltiness we balanced out from my um, salted butter uh-oh earlier. Where were we? We're stirring the butter, we are stirring the dry Chex Mix, waiting on the butter to calm down, to melt down. And we are talking about history. So 1903, we've got the Wright brothers. They've got their first recorded powered, sustained and controlled flight in a heavier than air flying machine. So, I think that our sauce concoction is ready to rock and roll. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off and start pouring it on our giant mixture. And we will continue on with our aviation history shenanigans. Hopefully that had like seasoning in it because it kind of looks like all the seasonings at the bottom. We'll see. Time will tell. Y'all, I'm getting butter freaking everywhere. And my hair won't stay out of my face. I tried to pin it back, did a bad job. Yeah, there's gonna be like butter all over this stove. This is why Dylan is the main cook in our house. <laughs> there we go. This is a much more reasonable amount. All right, so I gave my camera a little break and finished stirring the rest of that butter in. And I'll let you have a look. Here's what we're working with. Looking good, it smells really good. So we're going to put it on baking sheets now and pop it in the oven at 250 for says 45 minutes. So let's dump this stuff on here so we can get back to talking about aviation. Okay, Google, set a timer for 15 minutes. Okay, 15 minutes. And that's starting now. I love Google. You can just boss her around. She doesn't care. She's happy to help. Okay, yeah, we had just talked about the Wright brothers. So the Wright brothers were 1903, and they had the first recorded powered, sustained, controlled flight. Uh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. So that was in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. And I just think that that is um, a fun thing to say, Kitty Hawk. I think it's because it has the word kitty in it. Meow. Y'all know I love cats. So in 1904, the first powered flight in New Zealand happened. So there's some debate on when that actually happened. And apparently there are some records indicating that it actually happened before the Wright brothers. So who knows? I'm sure um, like those families have probably been like battling over it, don't you think? 
1921, Bessie Coleman, who is an African-American woman, gets a license to fly anywhere around the world. And this is a big first, first African-American woman to do that. I didn't see when the first like African-American man could do it. She was a manicurist and her brother would always like tease her. She lived in America and he had been off in France doing something. So he would always tease her about how in um, France they were just like more open and women had more rights and can do more things and starts talking about like aviation and stuff and that just kind of like lights a fire for Bessie and she's like, I'm gonna prove you wrong, whatever. I can do anything I wanna do. And so she is trying to find someone here in the US that will train her to be a pilot and she can't find anyone. So she's like, fuck it, I'll just go to France. So she quits her job as a manicurist and goes to work as a manager in a chili restaurant so she can make some more money she reaches out and finds some people to help support her in the like monetary sense and while she's doing all that she's learning french and she manages to get over to france and goes through like aviation school and is learning to do all these like crazy tricks and stuff and like one of her fellow students dies learning to do this and girl just keeps trekking on and eventually graduates and comes back to the U.S. and is basically a badass. 1927, we have the first transatlantic flight with Charles Lindbergh. Hopefully I'm saying that right. So that's the first uh, non-stop solo flight. And then in 1932, the first woman to do a transatlantic solo non-stop flight and that would be Amelia Earhart who in my head I always want to call Earnhardt and I think that's because from the south and I just think about racing but Amelia Earhart. After Amelia we have another lady badass on our list from 1932 to 1937 we've got Miss Jean Batten uh, so she is from New Zealand and she made a record number of around the world flights. Way to go, lady aviators. So then in 1939, we get our first fully jet propelled aircraft. In 1947, we have the first aircraft that exceeds the speed of sound. What? 1970, we get our first Boeing 747 commercial flight. So we can all be flying together that's back when like you could like smoke in airplanes it's crazy right yeah like the 70s it feels like they were that long ago but really they're not i guess everybody just smoked then though i've seen mad men i know what's up oh this, this one's kind of fine 1979 brian allen breaks the record for longest flight on a like man propelled plane so he went 26 miles propelling himself for two hours and 49 minutes. Like Flintstone style, but in the air. I don't know, that sounds awful, but good for him, like what a badass. 1986, one year before my birth, first nonstop solo flight around the world happened. And that took four, that took nine days. The article I read did say that the plane was like super lightweight. Okay, so I just flipped the Chex Mix and I will do that every 15 minutes until they're golden brown. My recipe tells me it should take about 45 minutes, but since someone got a roll carried away with the butter, I'm just gonna go ahead and foreshadow that it's gonna take more than a couple flips for that to get done. Moving on to the last event that I have for y'all today in the aviation history department. So in 2011, they came out with the first flying car. So what that means is it is a street legal vehicle that can take off and land on a runway and then um, like it tucks its arms in. <laughs> tucks its arms in uh, to be able to drive. And it looks kind of crazy. I'll put a picture up and some links. And that one, two years ago, I think it was 2018, the video I watched, 
They were trying to have it out by the next year um, under the light sport aircraft category, whatever that means. And then there's another version of it that I read an article on. This car looks like way cooler. It's definitely like more Jetson-y feeling. It's the Klein Vision. The article just came out a couple weeks ago, like November 4th, maybe 2020. And so that article reads that they vow to have it out by next year. So another reason to look forward to 2021, flying cars, y'all. I'll put links up to uh, both of those articles and um, the recipe as well. Okay, so our Chex Mix is out of the oven. It ended up cooking for probably like an hour and 15 minutes and like taking it out and flipping it every 15 minutes. I put it, put them on a bunch of paper towels. So the Chex is cooling on its paper towels and then it's basically done. I have some little baby M&Ms that I think I'll like mix in with it once it's done cooling so they don't melt. You know, I made that huge batch, so I've got some more in the oven that I mixed up while this was cooking. So I decided that the first round like wasn't as spicy as I wanted it to be. It tastes good. So I mixed up one more batch and like really went heavy on the Worcestershire. Worcestershire? However you say it. Uh, so then I'll just like mix them all together and I think it'll be a perfect balance. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed our aviation. <laughs> Aviation and Chex Mix, Whimsical Wednesday today. Let me know how you like to make your Chex Mix in the comments below, and I will see your beautiful faces next time. It's the real Ray. Bye.